Look what people have done to God. And why? Because of their expectations. I expect this from God, I expect this from God, I expect this from God, I expect this from God. And then when they don't get it, there is no God. <laughs> so what is people's expectations of God? Two eyes. Two ears, white hair, light in the back, only in the back, not in the front, <laughs> only in the back. <laughs> Teeth, lips, hands, feet. So then people go, I'm looking for God, I'm looking for God, I'm looking for God. Are you looking for God? Or are you looking for somebody who you think should be God? You don't have white hair, you don't have big eyes, you don't have light in the back. God doesn't need eyes. God doesn't need eyes. What is God going to see with the eyes? Who is omniscient? Who can see everything. Doesn't need eyes like these in the front. Because then you could be doing things in the back. All these restrictions of human beings we place on God, we say this is what God should be. This is expectation. This is expectation. So, put aside your expectation. Receive, know how to receive. Know how to receive. When you open this heart, when you go inside, you feel knowing the coming and going of this breath is the blessing. Then that God is residing inside of you. We need feet, we need legs to go from here to there to here. But where is God going to go? Where is God going to go? From where to where? Can God go from there to there? Impossible. Who is there and there <laughs> and everywhere in between, how is that going to go from there to there? So we need legs. We are not there and not there, so we need to go from there to there. We need legs. God doesn't need legs. <laughs> yeah, this is why I say, what is your reason for living? Are you living for fulfilling other people's expectations? Now how do you know about God? Eh? How do you know about God? It's simple, somebody told you. And whoever the first person was who told you, whatever spices he put in there, they have stuck with you and they will stay with you for the rest of your life.
How do you know about heaven? How? Been there? How do you know about hell? You been there? No. Oh, you can, you can say, I'm sure that what I have just felt must be hell. <laughs> I can understand that. But you see, somebody told you about hell and it stuck. Somebody told you about heaven, oh, how, whatever they describe, oh, heaven is beautiful. And you are, oh, heaven is beautiful. Maybe you were a little child and you read a fairy book and you saw clouds and the gate. <laughs> heavenly gates. Maybe you heard that in somebody's explanation. And the heavenly gates open. <laughs> My question is. Why does heaven have gates? <laughs> no. Just use a little simple logic. Why? Is it, is it to keep people from hell from coming in? Think about it. Then that means that people would have access from hell all the way to the gates of heaven. Because if they can't come there, why do you need the gates? Or is it to keep people in? <laughs> Because it's boring. <laughs> Every day is just perfect. Uh, <laughs> you know. What? But see? That's, that's not heaven. Heaven is here. In you. Now. This is where your God resides. And wherever God is, is heaven. The whole idea, the whole idea, it's about now. If you don't know, then you are in ignorance. Nothing is a bigger hell than darkness, ignorance. And nothing is a greater joy than that light. That beauty. Receive it. Receive it.